car parts store here and look at what's in this, this parking lot. Okay, look, the front of this Volvo is closer to the, farther over the curb than my van. Now, look, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. How is it this long? It is absurd. It's huge. A reader just told me to visit this place called Terang Axel. And now I'm here and holy crap, what is this? Oh my, look at this. This is a Jeep J10. I have one at home. All the way in Sweden, there's a J10. This is one of the weirdest looking cars I've ever seen. Look at this thing. So this may look like a homemade creation, but actually it was built by either Ford or Chevrolet uh, during the 1940s. Ford and Chevrolet's Canadian divisions built hundreds of thousands of military trucks. These are called Canadian military pattern trucks. Uh, the Fords are called uh, Ford Blitz. They also called them Ford F-15s. Chevrolet's might be called a Chevrolet C60S. Regardless, Canadian Chevrolet, Canadian Ford built these epic looking trucks for the war effort. And they made their way to militaries all around the world. Oh, wow. It's got the T-177. Uh four-speed manual, just like mine. Oh my God. Wow, jeez. This is, oh my gosh. It's heaven. Look at this. It's just a motor on the ground. Wait a second. No, I know this motor. I know this motor. There are two of them. These are both AMC inline sixes. All the way here in Sweden, I know an inline six when I see one, especially of the AMC variety. And that is exactly what this is. Collection of vehicles is pretty much the perfect collection of vehicles. Old Jeeps, old military vehicles, they're just all cool. I am driving from um, Göteborg to a town called Venice. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like 11 and a half hours northeast in Sweden. It's way up north in Sweden. What's there? I don't know. A reader invited me as a joke. He's like, hey, if you're ever up in 60 degrees north latitude, hit me up, LOL. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm taking him seriously, and we're going to see if this thing can drive a thousand kilometers up there and then a thousand kilometers back. We will see. I'm, this tank will be my best run for fuel economy. You can see I've gone 179 kilometers, and the fuel gauge is still pegged at full. So. I'm excited to see what kind of fuel economy I get on this Swedish smooth, slow road. Moose spotted. It's huge. I still have another six hours north um, of driving, so I bet you there'll be quite a bit of snow on the ground when I get there. All right, things are starting to get pretty darn pretty up here in uh, northern parts of Sweden. Look at that speeding camera. They're everywhere here. Fort Vickens Hoppersbrook. I'm gonna assume that's some sort of paper mill. Wow, this place. Look at this old diesel Volvo. It's the most Sweden car ever. It is burning some diesel. So I just drove an agonizing 817 kilometers on these slow Swedish roads in the, the Voyager. This should have maximized the fuel economy. This van will probably never get better fuel economy than it did just now over the last 800 kilometers. So let's see what this thing's capable of. We're about to fill it up. Okay, we used 58.82 liters to go those 817 miles. So let's see what that translates to in. Okay, calculations are in. It's about 33 miles per gallon, 32.7, which is Pretty phenomenal for a seven passenger vehicle. All right, well, I'm headed to a reader's house here in the northern-ish parts of Sweden. You'll see there's quite a bit of ice on the ground. Um, things are actually pretty darn remote here. So I think if this guy does end up murdering me and harvesting my organs, I'm thinking he's probably gonna get away with it. <laughs> 